Good evening, Aotearoa and the world. Born 19th November 1953 in California, I'm a classic sassy Convair 580 turboprop airliner. My vital measurements are 105 feet 4 inches by 81 feet 6 inches. With 56 passenger and crew, my weight is none of your damn business. Dwayne of Air Chathams has described me to the press as built like a brick shithouse. But Dwayne can be downright rude sometimes. Initially intended for United Service, I instead got my start with Sabina Belgian Airlines as OOSCT. My what years those were. Pressurized, sleek, and fast, I carried royalty and the cream of European society out of the still war-weary 50s and into the swinging 60s. I don't want to brag, but if you can think of a famous European from those years, there's a good chance I've had them inside me. Crisscrossing the European skies, I love the life and the glamour of being at the heart of the European Renaissance and seeing the founding of what has become the European Union. But there was a dark side to my adopted country, Belgium, and sadly I became involved with the dying years of the heinous crime that was the Congo crisis in the former Belgian Congo. It was a real mess with the Cold War being fought by proxy, a place of unending civil wars, and yes, I made it worse by flying in mercenaries. Those men were pigs. It's not a time I'm proud of. It got so bad that in 1968, I had to fly back home to America, where I got a new identity, N71367, and new turboprop engines. I settled into work as a commuter airliner for Frontier Airlines out of Denver, Colorado. I worked for Frontier for 18 happy years, ferrying middle America to and from work, families, and holidays. In February 1986, I moved on to American Eagle in Texas. Boy, things are bigger in Texas. These were the days of Dallas, epitomized by J.R. Ewing and Big Oil. But my past caught up to me, and in July 1987, I was sent to hell. For aircraft, hell is a place on Earth in the dry burning heat of the Mojave Desert called the Mojave Air and Spaceport, airport code MJV. In the aviation industry, it's known as the Boneyard, where planes come to die, bereft of crew and care to be parked up in a prison parade, most eventually stripped of anything of value with bodies torn to tinfoil to become tomorrow's Coke cans. You can imagine my fear. Happily, that was not my fate, and in May 1989, I joined Era Aviation. I had 16 happy years flying people around Alaska before joining Reef Air in September 2005, flying in Tonga and Fiji. What a nice change from Alaskan cold to Pacific Island warmth for an old girl. Reef Air became Chatham Pacific in 2008, and I continued my island hopping lifestyle until 2013, when I began flying charter in Aotearoa for American company Talk Tours. In 2016, I got my full current Air Chatham's livery and was pleased to be able to be part of the team that came and saved Wanganui's airport and scheduled air service when Air New Zealand dropped the region. Flying the Wanganui Auckland route, I'm proud to have carried many of you, connecting you to your families, holidays, and business. I'm a grand old lady who has seen the world from London and Paris to New York via Kinshasa and Nikilofa. So when I tell you you've got a very special place here in Wanganui, Aotearoa. Last year, however, my age caught up with me and my cockpit windows developed leaks. This combined with FAA changes, I'm from a time when children were invited into the cockpit, but the cockpit sadly now required armored locked doors. Mean, I came out of service. Yes, I'm not looking my most glamorous sitting up at Auckland International Airport at the moment, but the future is looking bright. I'm proud to have been given my first name, Tawara O. Wanganui, the spirit of Wanganui, and I'm looking forward to retiring to Wanganui where I'll take up residence in Castle Cliff. I'll be under the flight path into Wanganui Airport, so I'll be able to greet my colleagues as they fly Wanganui people in and out, as well as keeping a close eye on the young pilots learning to fly.